Good day everyone and welcome to the program There's Hope in Jesus Christ. The name of today's message is the Council of the Elders. And basically what I'll be doing is showing us how important the elders are, not just in the church but in society as a whole. And I'll be using one main scripture reading as well as some supportive text just to justify how important the Council of the Elders are. Now I know that it's good to be young and vibrant and the young people, they have their place in society, they have their place in the church. In fact, in one scripture reading which is taken from the book of 1 John chapter 2 verse 14, the author is writing a letter to the church and here he's complimenting the young men. He says, I write to you young men because you are strong and the word of God lives in you and you have overcome the evil one. So here the writer or the author is saying, you know, young men, you all have everything, you know, that's needed to live a victorious Christian life. God has equipped you with what you need and you're young, you're youthful, you have the energy. But, you know, even, even though there are many scripture readings that compliment young people, in today's message, I'll be focusing on the counsel of the elders and how important elders are. So before I actually go into the message, I just want to begin with a, a short word of prayer. Thank you Lord for this message, O oh God, that you have given to me to give to your people today, O oh God. Lord, I ask that those who are hearing that, O oh God, they will take this message to heart and at the end of it, O oh God, they will learn to respect their elders and they will, they will learn to listen to their elders and be obedient to them in a better way. And thank you, Lord God, for working and using me as a vessel to deliver this message. And for this, I give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So, before I actually go into the message, the council of the elders, some of us would have an idea what council is. And I have a definition here. And this is taken from the Free Dictionary. And according to the Free Dictionary, the meaning of council is advice or guidance especially a solicited from a knowledgeable person and in this case we could think of the elders make sense because they are, are usually knowledgeable persons because of the experiences that they've gone through in life the many experiences that we young people may be lacking so the first scripture reading that i want to look at is taken from the book of exodus chapter 18 and just a little synopsis or, or to let you know something before I go into Exodus chapter 18 as to the situation leading to this chapter now the Israelites had just been taken out from the Egyptian bondage they had just crossed the Red Sea what was carrying them to the promised land and they were going through all sorts of, of different little trials and of course God was bringing them through you know, they, they got water from the rock, they caught fed them with manna and quails. And Moses, he was about to meet with his father-in-law. And basically that's where, where this chapter starts. So I'm going to read this chapter, you know, you'll look at it. And then I'll really get into what I have to say with how this relates to the council of the elders. So... Exodus chapter 18, we'll be starting from verse 1 and we'll be going all the way down to verse 27, the entire chapter. And this is what it says. When Jethro, the priest, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel his people, and that the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt, then Jethro... Moses' father-in-law took Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back. And her two sons, of which the name of the one was Gershom, for he said, I have been an alien in a strange land. And the name of the other was Eliza, for the God of my father said he was my help, and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife unto Moses into the wilderness, where he encamped at the mount of God. And he said unto Moses, I thy father in law Jethro am come unto thee and thy wife and her two sons with her. And Moses went out to meet his father in law and did obeisance, or he paid respect to him, 
and kissed him and they asked each other of their welfare and they came into the tent. And Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord had done unto Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake, and all the travail that had come upon them by the way, and how the Lord delivered them. And Jethro rejoiced for all the goodness which the Lord had done to Israel, whom he had delivered out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord who had delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of Pharaoh, who had delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods, for in the thing wherein they dwelt proudly he was above them. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took a burnt offering and sacrifices for God. And Aaron came, and all the elders of Israel, to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before God. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood by Moses from the morning unto the evening. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, What is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou thyself alone, and all the people stand by thee from morning unto evening? And Moses said unto his father-in-law, Because the people come unto me to inquire of God. When they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one and another, and I do make them know the statutes of God and his laws. And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. Thou wilt surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee. For this thing is too heavy for thee, thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Hearken now unto my voice, I will give thee counsel or advice and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to Godward, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God, and thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people evil men such as fear God, men of truth, hate, and covetousness, and place such over them, to be rulers of thousands, and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all seasons, and it shall be, that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. If thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure. And all these people shall also go to their place in peace. So Moses hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he had said. And Moses chose able men out of all Israel and made them heads over the ruler over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of, of tens. And they judged the people at all seasons. The hard causes they brought unto Moses, but every small matter they judged themselves. And Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went his way into his own land. So Moses was basically doing everything, and he was telling his father-in-law this. And his father-in-law is saying, he observed, and he's asking him, you know, why do you do this? And judge the people, and each of them come into you, day in, day out, from morning to evening. You know, you're human, even though God is with you, you know, it's not wise, it will wear you out. And he told him, you know, you, you should teach the people the way, set up rulers, let them be over persons. If there are any small cases, let them judge, and any hard cases, let them come to you, that will ease you up. And when you think about it, it really makes a lot more sense, because you can think of an organization. Where there's a CEO, there are, there are persons under the CEO, persons under them, and there are supervisors, and they all oversee groups of people. But Moses, he was more or less overlooking over and supervising everybody. Think about a CEO supervising everybody with no one under him. Of course, it'll wear them out. The job alone is tough. And that's what Moses' father in law was saying. Let them know the way, set rulers, you know, over fifties and hundreds and thousands, persons who, you know, they 
they are righteous people, let them help you out. Any small matters, let them deal with it. And any hard matters, then they come to you. That way you're going to get a, a big ease up and you wouldn't wear yourself out. And of course, it's wise advice. This is, this is the counsel of Moses' father-in-law. You know? And it sets the trend in terms of the message, the counsel of the elders, because Moses' father-in-law was an elder and he gave him good advice. He guided him the right way by telling him this. And you know, sometimes, a lot of us, we don't like to listen to our parents, we like to listen to our grandparents, we like to listen to our elders in society and in the church. But, you know, they have wisdom, they have experience. And there are a lot of favorable scriptures in the Bible that, that you know, speak about elders and how important their counsel is, you know. So, you know, we should really listen to our parents and our, our elders and our grandparents when they tell us certain things because, you know, because of the years that they've been around, especially if they are, if they are godly elders, godly parents you know they'll be able to guide us accordingly guide us the right way you know it's never a good thing for us as young people to think we know it all because we don't know it all and the word of god here shows us how important it is to listen to our, to our elders and you know this was the main scripture reading that i'll be using for this message just to show us you know how wise our elders are now I want to go on to some supportive texts to justify how important the counsel of the elder of the elders are. Let's now turn to James chapter 5, verse 14. This is my first supportive text. in the book of James chapter 5 verse 14 this is what it says is any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord just want to read that one more time is any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. So, here we see how important it is. Now, I'm not saying you, if it is an elder doesn't anoint with oil and pray for you that you will be healed. But here it is in the word of God that it's saying that if you're sick, let the elders anoint you with oil and pray for you. So, here we see another important rule of elders, how, how their, their counsel is important, how, how important their role is, and in this case we see it in the church. Let's look to another supportive text which is in the book of 1st Timothy, chapter 5, and we'll be looking at verse 1 to 2 and then verse 17. So verse 1 to 2 in chapter 5 of 1 Timothy says, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren, the elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters with all purity. Look at that. It says, Rebuke not an elder, but have respect for him as a father, and the elder woman as mothers. Now, why? It's, it's, it's a bit... You're wondering why is it that how could the Bible say rebuke not an elder but have respect for them? Because you're thinking to yourself now that if somebody does something wrong, you know, they need correction, but God is saying here yeah, that the word of God says that you should have respect for them as parents. Wow. And that that has me really it, it has me wondering a bit, you know. And it, it shows me, you know, what God thinks of elders, how highly he rates them. To such a point that, that they would have got said, don't rebuke them, but have respect for them. In fact, there's another 
scripture that says that you know we ought to encourage our elders. Alright. So we see that you know in the church, if we are sick, we can go to them, let them know anoint us at all and pray for us. We see here that you know we are not to rebuke elders, we are supposed to have respect for them. Let's go down to verse 17 of the same chapter, and it says let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. So again here, we see some compliments being given to the elderly, or to the elders in the church and the society, that they should be counted worthy, not just of honor, but of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. Again, another scripture that compliments, you know, the work of the elders, or, or that compliments elders in general. Alright, so we've seen a lot of good scriptures concerning the elders, and I just want to change that a bit, because all is not all, it's, it's not, it's not all good with elders all right because just as there's good there's bad just as there are pros there are cons and i want to look at first samuel chapter 3 verse 10 to 14 and in this i want to look at what happens when elders they don't respect their counsel when they don't operate as they should and when they don't lead as they should. And just a little synopsis of what is taking place here. Samuel, you know, he was he was being he ministered unto the unto the, the priest Eli. And Eli, he had some sons, and his sons, they were not children of God, they were in fact the, the Bible says they are they were evil because they didn't operate as they should. <clears throat> and also what makes it worse is that Eli knew about this and he did nothing. Being their, being their father. Being an elder to them. And, you know, so God is speaking to Samuel. Samuel didn't understand, you know, when God was calling him. And... He called them out, I believe it was three times, and this was the fourth time he was calling them, and Eli said, the next time God calls, you say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening, and this is where we take it up, and God is going to give a message for Eli. So 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 10 to 14, and this is what it says. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, speak, for thy servant hear it. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of, of every one that heareth it shall tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth because his sons made themselves vile and he restraineth them not and therefore i have sworn unto the house of eli that the iniquity of eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice <clears throat> nor offering forever so <clears throat> god was about to bring upon judgment on the house of eli because eli eli's sons they were they were not living as they should. Eli knew about it and he did nothing about it being their father, being an elder. And God said because he's doing nothing about this, he's going to bring judgment on them. And you know, no burnt offering, no sacrifice is going to excuse them from the judgment that he's about to bring on them. And this is where I want to say that, you know, elders should not, they should not despise their role in society in the church. In fact, when they despise it and when they don't take up the responsibility of fulfilling their role you know they are in, they are in danger of the judgment of God you know we all have to account for our deeds and elders you know because they have a special place 
because they're supposed to be counselors because of the experience when they don't counsel when they don't do what they are supposed to do just as with Eli you know God will also do the same unto them they will be held accountable so don't think that you know the right way your children have been rebellious and you just leave them to themselves because when they perish you will also be held accountable that's what this, the word of God says just as the prophet Eli was held accountable all right so don't don't feel as as though you know I could live my life the right way and forget about everybody else once there are people under you once there are people that you can impact once there are persons within your reach that you could counsel in the right way if you are not reaching out to them you'll be held accountable and may, may the grace of God be with you if his judgment were to fall upon you God forbid so on that note I've come to the end of my message the counsel of the elders I know that you've been blessed and I trust that from today you know if you're a young person that you will respect the elders in society and in the church and also if you're an elder and you have not been doing what you are supposed to be doing I trust that you have a change of heart and you're going to take up your role in society and the church you're going to do what God would have you to do all right so I just want to close in a word of prayer thank you Lord for this word that you have allowed me to deliver to your people Lord God thank you Lord God for using me as a vessel thank you Lord God that lives will transform lives will change and thank you Lord God that as the book of James says, we will not just be hearers of your word, but do us also. Thank you, Lord God, for your grace and your mercies at me every morning. And, O oh Lord God, thank you for your blessings that you will pour upon your people for this coming week. And for this, we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise in Jesus' name. So until then, you wonderful people, have a blessed week, and take care.